operative temperature and the room energy, including heating, cooling, lighting, and equipment. In this one, I want to show you another results um, uh, option or component, which is the energy balance. Honeybee balance, no, not balance point temperature. Where are you? Thermal load balance, right there. Staring me in the face. So in this one, uh, this, this requires a few different uh, inputs that we haven't looked at so far. So first of all, um, it is going to require, let's start here. It's gonna require uh, cooling and heating and lighting, equipment, gas, process, hot water, people, solar, infiltration, chemical, ventilation, natural ventilation. Okay, so that is gonna give us a lot of the inputs and outputs of heat into the room. Uh, there's two things that are missing, the rooms model and the phase energy flow. And the um, phase energy flow is going to come from a component that we don't have on the canvas here. Um, that is up here at HP read face result and face energy flow there. And this takes the SQL in, uh, but notice that it's orange still. And that is because we need to allow for the surface temperature um, uh, simulation output right here. So I'm gonna mark that as true and I'm gonna let this run and I'm gonna get the little run box and then the hourly, daily, monthly run. And then I'm gonna look at my errors. I have more 19 warnings and I have Good. So notice that the uh, gas equipment, process, hot water, people, solar, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so uh, gas and uh, process and hot water is not there because I don't have any in the model, but the people, solar, and infiltration should be there. And that is because there's one more set of simulation parameters that I need, which is the gains and losses right here. So I'm gonna plug in this one as well. And by the way, um, the more of these that you plug in, the longer this takes to run. Uh, the run times are pretty uh, fast with the, the size model that we're running. So um, it probably is fine to continually run these with all four of these plugged in. But if you really want to do this super fast, if you're just looking at the EUI, then you can only, you, you know, you can plug in just the, the energy use one. And when you're looking at thermal balance, plug in all four. So now that we've got all four, I think. Oh, it didn't collect anything for face energy flow. Um, we do have the people, solar, infiltration, and mechanical now, uh, but we're missing that face energy flow, which we need for this. Why are we missing it? Oh, because I plugged in the wrong thing. Instead of surface temperature, this should be surface energy flow. Let me do that again. And we're gonna make this run again through the year. And just like I said, you know, the more of these that you have plugged in, the longer it takes. It's also true that the more of these you have plugged in, the longer it takes. Uh, so now this uh, has gone from orange to gray, which is great. And this uh, still needs a rooms model. And to do that, I'm gonna come over here to my rooms model there. Actually, I'm gonna use this and 
plug it in there, and now the warnings go away, which is wonderful. The easiest way to visualize the results from this, um, which are going to come out of this output right here, is to go to Ladybug. Where is Ladybug? There. Uh, visualize data and go to the monthly chart. And I'm going to take the storage and plug it into the data. And we should be able to see, oh, this is overlaid on other things. So I'm going to take a point and just put this there, the base point. So that'll just move the graph to a place where we can look at it better. And like this, um, it looks a little bit uh, difficult to read because they are stacked all on top of each other. So to uh, remedy that, I need to set the stack to true. And now it's a little bit easier to read. And show you the way to read this is that, oh, you know what? The colors are throwing me off as well. I'm going to change the color palette. Uh, I'll teach you how to do this too. This is probably good for you to know. So um, this legend parameter here will um, will allow you to change the color palette. So I can plug that in there, and then I'm going to change the colors. see it. Pal Maybe it's called palette. Nope. Did I spell it wrong? Nope. What's it called? I think it's up here. Yes, LB color range. There it is. And so I'm going to plug that in. And then I can hover over this and you can see number 19 is the energy balance with storage. Uh, that's the, the sort of color palette that they pre-baked for this, and I, I think it's pretty good um, because this helps me to see better the things that are gains, which are people, lights, equipment, solar, and heating, versus losses, which are, well, infiltration can be either a gain or a loss, uh, but uh, vent ventilation, well, ventilation can also be either a gain or a loss. Um, same with opaque conduction and window conduction. Uh, and then cooling is a loss. So things above this zero line are um, gains to the room and things below the zero line are losses to the room. So if I come back over here so we can see the key, you can see that the main gains here is uh, we have the HVAC system turning on in the morning and then going down as the solar uh, ramps up in the afternoon, and then the um, electric equipment is adding to the heat along with the lighting, and then uh, the opaque conduction through the envelope is uh, heating the room up, as is the um, window conduction. Uh, on the minus side, we are losing heat based on infiltration, um, which is this color. I don't even see people in here. I'm so small. There must not be a lot of people in this zone. We're losing heat by mechanical ventilation. Uh, we're losing heat by opaque conduction uh, later in the day. And then the rest of what we're uh, losing is the um, mass storage. So this is all in the thermal mass. So together, all these the gains and the losses equal zero as a balance. And this is a really nice way of starting to diagnose what parts of your building you might want to target in order to reduce energy use. The energy being used here is the heating, which is being used all day, especially in the morning. And then the um, equipment and lighting, of course, is also part of it. But if we're going to reduce the heating, I'd say the first thing that we should probably target is the uh, opaque conduction, so these guys, these losses that we're getting right here, as well as the infiltration right here. 
and um, we can address the opaque conduction with insulation in the exterior envelope. Um, we can address the infiltration by changing that as an interior load. Um, and um, the window conduction we can address by either reducing the size of windows or increasing the or decreasing the U value, increasing the, the uh, thermal resistance of those windows. If we go down to the summer, you can see um, that the cooling is predominant right in here and here. And so the way to reduce that, that would be to reduce the solar load. And we've got a lot of solar load here and here. Uh, we also have some opaque conduction and um, less uh, window conduction. So again, the insulation and or thermal mass here could help. And then the um, shading, the windows, maybe the SHGC of the windows, maybe even smaller windows would help. So it's just a way to sort of guide your work, make sure to, to look at the summer as well as the winter. Um, one more thing I wanted to point out here that would be helpful to you that I hadn't done so far is a way of looking at the characteristics and, and qualities of your building. I'm going to turn off my rhino layers here. So we're just looking at grasshopper and I'm going to come to back to this attributes box here. And we were visualizing all of the zones. If I unpreview that, there's nothing there, right? Um, in fact, just so I don't have all this garbage, I'm going to take off that. And um, so in, I can visualize more things than just the overall building. If I go to, where is it? Honeybee Energy. No, it's under Honeybee, I think. Where are you? Too many things open. There we go. Honeybee. Visualize. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of other things that we can visualize. So we visualized all of the parameters. We can also uh, visualize a wireframe. We can look at individual face attributes, uh, room attributes. So for example, I can drop a face attribute and a, a color the face attribute. So we put in the HP objects there. We put the display name in there. And then what we see on the canvas is the name for each one of these things. So the shade is this red, the room uh, two face five glazing zero is this uh, lighter orange, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it breaks everything down by uh, opaque versus transparent surface. The, um, we can also look at this by boundary conditions. So for example, these are all outdoors uh, this shade doesn't have a boundary condition and this floor has a boundary condition of the ground or we can look at area so the the area of the roof is 200 square meters um, the area of the two sides of the walls are 60 etc um, what else is useful here uh, face type, this will tell you uh, what it's identified and this will help you to uh, then identify the, um, the assemblies. So this is a, a, a wall, this is a roof, this is a floor. Um, and I can do the same thing for, that was for the faces. I can do this for the room as a whole. I'm going to turn off the preview here and visualize that's the the volume of the zone is 600 cubic meters or the gross floor area is 200 square meters the exterior wall area is 180 square meters etc and can also visualize these by type. This is another handy one. Again, I'm going to put the HP objects in and preview this. And you can see each one of the different elements are color coded. 
and uh, so you can see where the windows are, the walls, the roof, the shade, um, the floor. And if you wanted to look at these individually, you can make a little geometry component, uh, unpreview this, and you, then you can look at each one. So there's the walls, the roof individually. There's no, no uh, isolated ceilings, exterior floors, uh, apertures, etc., including a wire frame, should you want that. So it just gives you a whole bunch of different ways of looking at your building and seeing what you've designed. I find this to be a really useful way of checking my simulation uh, assumptions and making sure that I've done everything properly before I run um, a building uh, through simulation, just as a final check. Okay, so that's where we'll leave it for today, and I'll come back and show you more in the coming weeks. Good luck. Mm -hmm.